Hi, I'm Dave, and after a long time gone, I'm back. As you can see, it's a little cold. Hope this doesn't bother anybody. You can see my breath. But it's nice and quiet in my garden house, and the environment's okay too. So, what I'd like to talk about today is how to get started into mountain biking after a heart attack. Now, take into account, I'm not a doctor. So check with your doctor before you start any workout program. One massive tip I can give everybody when you start out trying to recover from a heart attack or stroke or anything and you're doing it on a mountain bike is start out slow. Keep your heart rate down in the range where the doctors tell you to keep it and do not overwork yourself. Your body will actually tell you when you've done too much. Not while you're doing the workout usually, but afterwards. And then when your body tells you that, write it down. Keep a log. This was too much right now. Then I need to take it easier. I always put in a couple rest days. A rest day after a short workout, and then two or three rest days after a longer ride. You also might want to fiddle in with some walking. I did lots of walking while I was recovering. The walking is really good because your body needs it anyways. It's natural for you to walk, to stand up and walk. Bike riding isn't actually natural. The main reason I went to mountain biking to help me improve is I love the outdoors and I've always liked biking anyways. So for me, mountain biking was the clear choice. I can't ride a road bike, that's too boring. I want to be out in the woods and I want some reward for my clients. So ride a mountain bike up, ride a mountain bike down. Much more exciting. I want to cover some of the equipment I bought to get into mountain biking after my heart attack so I could pay attention to my heart rate. Well, I was mountain biking after my heart attack. It's quite important that you can always keep an eye on what your body's doing, especially recovering from something serious like a heart attack or a stroke or any other illness that really impacted your body. So one of the first things you want to do is get yourself a heart rate monitor. Something like this. I got the Kuspu. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. This was on sale. This is what I got. Smartwatches are great. I also always wear a smartwatch, but when you're riding a mountain bike, it's not going to give you an accurate heart rate. Another thing I'd recommend doing is picking up a cycling computer. I picked up this Garmin 1030. It was an outgoing model. I got it pretty cheap. You don't have to pick up the best one. But it's nice to have something that you can constantly look at your heart rate in front of you and not having to keep a look at your watch. If it's directly in front of you, it's always in your sight. So you can see if you're trying to go too hard, you need to slow down and you can maintain better in the heart rate zone that you want to work in. The bike I bought and started mountain biking on after my heart attack was a 2021 Trek Roscoe 7. I picked it up right in the middle of the pandemic so i did pay full price for it which kind of hurt if you're getting into mountain biking now well everybody's way overstocked you can pick up some real good deals on bikes another thing i want to talk about in this video is some stuff i got coming up i'm currently building a new hardtail the trek roscoe is going to a new owner and i'm going to do some experiments with it one thing i noticed when i built my cube was I went to a 165 millimeter crank, which I already had on my e-bike. And I really liked the 165 crank over the 170 that was on the Trek. So now you see all these videos coming out with shorter cranks are better, measure your crank length and all this. So I decided maybe I'll measure. And I actually came up with, I should be running a crank somewhere between 150 and 155. So what I did was I didn't go spend a bunch of money on some really expensive cranks right away. I'm gonna try them out cheaper. So, order me some AliExpress. Read some reviews on these. Actually, there's a guy on YouTube that actually did a review on them. And it's a Goldex crank set. Well, let me pull it out here. I got the 160 millimeter version right here. I also have the 100, 155 millimeter version. I'm gonna throw the 160 on first and try it out, see how I like it. The quality doesn't look too bad, how it's built. It's a little heavy, but I'm not really worried about that, but for the price to come with a bottom bracket and a chain ring, I mean, the chain ring's kind of ugly and probably trash, but I run ovals, so it doesn't matter that thing. I'm not going to use it, but 
I'm going to try out the cranks and I'll cover on the channel what I thought of them. I'm also going to try to do a long term review if they're the correct length and I'll let everybody know how they hold up. If they're really good, well, then you guys will know. You don't have to go spend $400 to get the correct size cranks if you're short like I am. Also in this video I'll cover what I've been doing the whole year. In the few weeks that I was healthy, where I went, where I've rode, what I've done. One of the coolest things I've done this year was go to Bad Klein Kirchheim in Austria and ride the longest flow trail in Europe. It was a really good time. There's mixed reviews all the time of if it's 13 and a half kilometers or 15 kilometers. I came up with 13.7 on my nav and yeah, I definitely recommend if you live in Europe to go one time. Even as a freshly new mountain biker, if you take your time, you can get down the trail. It's not hard to ride. If you're afraid of heights, there are a couple spots that are gonna make you kind of shaky, but it's well worth it. It's a good time. In May, as usual, we went out and visited the guys in Miltenburg. Every May they do a group ride called Trails Unlimited. It's free, but they take donations if you want to give donations. I believe it's one of the best trail systems in Germany. If you do the whole loop, it comes out to about 30 kilometers and about a thousand meters of elevation. In April, I started out my mountain biking season by going out to Treuklingen to the Hoimoden trails. It is a really cool trail system. They're currently putting in a lift. When I was there, there was not a lift yet, so I had to pedal up everything myself. I actually took my cube, took my bio bike, and if you take the long climbs, they're not very steep. Most of them average between three and four percent grade. There are a couple spots that'll hit around 10, but it's actually not bad and it's well worth it. The trails are actually very well maintained. I definitely recommend it.
hopefully in the next few weeks I can get my cube restoration video up. This winter I picked up a cracked cube carbon frame. I'm very good at working with composites, repairing and building stuff with them. So I figured it would be an easy job to fix the frame and paint it up and build up a new bike. It wasn't a hard build, but I did go a little crazy on the paint job because, well, I love airbrushing too. So I figured might as well do it up nice. So I hope everybody got something enjoyable or learned something or some inspiration out of this video. I plan to have more videos out soon. I'm sorry I was gone so long. I promise it won't be that long to my next video. And hopefully we'll see you guys again. Dave out.